Hello and uh, welcome to this lecture. Uh, we are going to talk about a uh, couple of things uh, in, uh, in this lecture. The first thing is uh, fixed point uh, implementation for the decoder. I think I mentioned it briefly before. I want to say a few more things systematically about it. And the second thing we will see is uh, rate matching uh, for the LDPC code in the 5G standard. So, how, how that is done is uh, like I said precisely described in the standard, but I will point out uh, uh, a simple implementation for the rate matching uh, that I will do. Okay, So, it can be modified uh, later on. These are the two things we will do in this lecture. So, let us get started. So, uh, so if you remember the, the basic model that we have, uh, we have, uh, we have uh, BPSK. which takes 0 to plus 1, 1 to minus 1. And then we have the received value uh, after additive white Gaussian noise, R is S plus uh, some noise, right. So, now this is plus 1 or minus 1 and this is Gaussian, Gaussian random variable means 0 and variance is going to be some sigma square that you will pick in the simulation based on the EB over N naught that you want. Okay, So, this is the uh, picture. So, if, if you want to draw it on an axis, you can draw the value of R on an axis. Uh, you have plus 1 here, minus 1 here Okay, and uh, the values are going to be around uh, this minus 1 maybe depends on the sigma square. right? So, you can have all sorts of values. Uh, this is what you have. Okay. So, generally as per this model, this r is a real value. So, what do I mean by a real value? You could get something like you know 1.002345, things like that. So, so the precision uh, can be very high or something like that, at least in the model, the way we write MATLAB code, MATLAB uses double precision numbers. So, they have a quite a few decimal points, Okay, so maybe 32 bits, 64 bits like that. Okay. So, however, in implementations, when you want to put it, uh, put your uh, decoder on a chip or on a processor, on a board which has low power, typically people you do not use such very high levels of uh, quantization. So, you cannot use 64 bits per received value and all that is really hard. In fact, the number of bits they will allow is depending on the area that you can have on the chip, etcetera, maybe just 5 bits or 4 bits per value. So, this is uh, technically, theoretically infinite precision. In theory, uh, so in practice, uh, double precision, say in uh, most commuting uh, in in software, when you do simulations, you are probably using 32 bits, 64 bits these days. Okay, so that's what is uh, double precision. So in hardware, you probably want five bits per received value. Okay, so you have to quantize. And I will mention briefly how I am going to do the quantizing. This is how it is done uh, typically. Okay. So, when you quantize, uh, uh, usually first thing you do is set a maximum possible value. So, you will clip your uh, the value that you consider to some region. So, for instance, R equals S plus N, N is Gaussian, Gaussian can be plus infinity, minus infinity, it can take a very large value sometimes, occasionally it does happen. Okay. So, in, in practice what you do is first you clip it to some R max. Okay. R max minus r max. Okay. So, what I will do is r will come in and I will clip and I will get uh, some r prime which is clipped. So, what, 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 what will this do? Uh, so, r prime equals r if r is between minus uh, plus r max and minus r max. And uh, this will be, uh, I should put something like this, it will be minus r max if r is lesser than minus r max and it will be plus r max if r is greater than r max. So, this is the clipping operation. So, if you go above uh, r max or below minus r max, you set it as r max. Okay. So, a typical value for r max could be 
uh, could be 3 or 4 or something like that. In this case, for the BPSK case, that seems uh, fine enough. You do not need uh, much more than that. Uh, so, notice I am doing 3 or 4 and I am assuming the received symbol is plus 1 or minus 1 plus noise. Uh, so, there will be some gains in your receiver chain to make sure that that happens correctly. Okay? So, R max and minus R max is uh, typically for the decoding purpose, you could take it as 3 or 4, it is not wrong. Okay? So, once you decide on an R max, uh, the values in between have to be represented by just 5 bits. Okay? So, now let us say we will take 6 bits just for just for uh, having some convenience. So, if you look at 6 bits, uh, 1 bit is going to show you sign, right. So, 1 bit, uh, so then after this R prime has to be uh, quantized uh, to say 6 bits, okay. 1 bit is uh, sign, the remaining 5 bits is magnitude. So, that is one way to think about it. So, you can do a very quick and dirty operation to do this quantization, it is pretty good uh, in most cases. So, so you take the maximum integer that you want to allow, it is just 31, right. So, if you have 5 bits, you can go from uh, minus 31 to 31, ok. So, those of you who know uh, double, you know, the two's complement method of representation will tell me it is minus 32 to plus 31, uh, but we will just keep it as 31. Okay, So, we will take minus 31 to plus 31 as the maximum integer and you have R max and you have this R prime as well and uh, what I will do is for quantizing is simply first divide by R max okay, and then I will multiply this with max int and then take the integer part of it. So, this is a very convenient and simple way to do uh, quantization. So, this is the quantized value. Okay. So, hopefully this is clear to you. Okay. So, you take R prime, uh, the clipped value divide by R max multiply by max int and take the integer value. You could take floor or seal or something like that, it does not matter. So, you, you can take uh, the integer value. Okay, so this gives you integers. So what will happen once you do this is uh, on the in the receiver you will have uh, integer value. So so you can see automatically one bit becomes sine, five bit becomes magnitude when you do this. If R prime is negative, this integer is going to be negative. So so it will be minus uh, five or plus five or things like that. So I'll show you uh, when we write this in MATLAB how the values look. Uh, but this is how it works. So you have your received value, you clip it, then you quantize, you get integer values. So, these are integers from minus 31 to plus 31, okay. And you work with this integer in your decoder, okay. So, you may be uh, doing operations with this integer, you may add them. If you add, you have to make sure that you do not uh, exceed too, too large a number. So, all that you have to take care of, okay. So, I so will stop with this as far as this course is concerned. So, we will do quantization and we will work with quantized values. So, now quantization has some effect on the decoders. These decoders we implement are suboptimal. So, you have to be slightly careful when you quantize and be watch out for things that happen because of quantization. Okay? So, one of the effects is uh, quantization makes received values equal. Okay? So, for instance, uh, you, you may never get two received values which are the same if you do not quantize, but if you quantize, you will get the same values. So, because of that, there can be some suboptimality, of course, there will be suboptimality and you have to take care of those things when you in the decoder. Okay? So, some things to watch out for, but generally this will work. What works with real values will typically work with uh, these kind of integer values as well. Okay? So, this is uh, how uh, uh, the quantization is done. Uh, so, let me show you in MATLAB how uh, I have done these modifications to the decoder to put in this and work with integers. Okay? So, the MATLAB code for the successive cancellation decoder. So, maybe I should. So, keep this going. Okay. For the successive cancellation decoder for polar codes. So, previously we did not have uh, the integer, the fixed point uh, version of this code. So, I have saved it as uh, NR polar SE decode FP and then I have. Uh, I have, I have put in the integer thing. So, you can see what I have done. I have done the R max as 4. You could, I mean, you, you will have this code with you. You can try with 3, etcetera, if you, if you think that works. Okay. And I uh, put max QR as 31. 
Okay, so this is the maximum integer received value. The other things don't change. Nothing much changes. Everything else is the same. You decode and all that. And now when you transmit, you'll do the BPSK just like before. You'll do the received value just like before. Okay, in the simulation, this is how it works. And then I will do the quantization. You can do the quantization in multiple ways. Uh, I have done it in a slightly different way here. You can see I have divide, divided r by r max and then multiplied by max qr. Then I take the floor of it to get rq. And then, uh, so, so I am not clipping first. So, I am doing the clipping a bit differently here. Uh, so, so, you can see you can do r by r max into max qr and then you do the clipping. Okay, so, this is the, the clipping comes here. Okay. So, this is also fine. So, so, you do r by r max into max qr and then you clip. And uh, here you can see I have clipped up to max qr on the positive side. On the negative side, I have done minus max qr plus 1. Okay, so, I am doing minus 32 to plus 31, which is uh, actual 2's complement uh, representation of uh, integers. Okay, so, so, hopefully that is clear. So, you will see that this is equal and you can also do it the other way. You can clip r to first minus r max to r max and then uh, this will not be needed. You can just do the flow. Okay, that is also fine. So, after this nothing much uh, changes, a uh, couple of things to watch out for. So, if you look at the f and g operations, so if you remember the polar decoder, we only do f and g, we do not do anything else in terms of operations on the received values. Uh, the f operation is ok, because it does not do anything to increase the value of what is coming in. So, it just takes minimum of the two values. So, it does not need any special handling. Uh, on, on the other hand, g needs some saturation. The reason is, so what, what g does is adds two values. So, if you take for instance plus 31 and plus 31 and you add, you get plus 62, okay. but uh, you are allowed only to go between minus 31 to 31, you want to quantize it back. Okay. So, that is why I have, I have written the saturation, it saturates the fp value and you can see the way I have written it, I have done max of x comma minus. Okay. So, this will uh, take care of the minus part, then after that I take a min of that max value comma max qr. Okay. So, this will ensure that uh, whatever value x is. Uh, it does the clipping. So, the saturation does the clipping between minus 32 and plus 31. Okay, it will not allow the value to go above that. If it goes above that on either side, it will clip it to either plus 31 on the positive side or minus 32 on the negative side. So, this is what I have done here. Uh, so, so the previously we did not have the sat x on the g function. So, now we put the sat x also. Okay, so, this uh, few changes are enough to make sure your code will work with the integer side, nothing more is needed here. Everything else is exactly the same and uh, you can work. Okay. So, this is uh, uh, hopefully clear. So, you have to make sure the received value becomes an integer. The saturation effect is something you have to watch out for and if you are doing any operations in your decoder which increases the value, you have to saturate again. <coughs> okay. So, sometimes uh, when you saturate like this, you have to be uh, paying some attention. For instance, in the LDPC code, there are two types of uh, values. One is the uh, LLR for the messages, the other is the LLR for uh, the total LLR. Okay. These two are saturated at different levels. They have to be saturated at different levels, otherwise your decoder will fail. Okay. So, I will comment on that uh, next, but, but this is something important. When, when you do operations, when you are expecting uh, the value to grow, you have to saturate. Okay. So, now let me move on to the LDPC code and show you once again how uh, this was done on the LDPC code. Uh, once again, you see here, I have uh, max uh, uh, r max is 4 and then I have max q r is 31. Okay. So, this is the quantization for the received value. I also have a max q for l okay. and this l values I am saying is 127. I am allowing it to go 2 bits higher in magnitude than r. Okay. So, this is important because uh, that l represents the total LLR which can be larger and then you have to subtract it from r to sub compute the extrinsic and all that. So, you have to allow it to be large. Okay. So, that is very important. And then other than that, what I do is largely the same. I will compute the, the BPSK modulation, then find the received values. Okay. And then of course, this is puncturing. And then after that, I am doing exactly the same thing. Okay. So, I do the computation of the floor, right? convert it into an integer and then you do the clipping. Okay. So, this clips. Okay. So, that is fine. I have done the clipping. Okay. So, now uh, in the decoder, so this is inside the LDPC decoder, you remember the LDPC decoder, you do row operations, right, in the layer decoding, row after row after row, uh, you, you work with it and then you, you, you subtract, you first subtract the total LLR minus what is already in the row, then you do the min sum on the row 
and then you add that value back to L total. Okay. So here is the subtraction. Subtraction happens here. Uh, the capital R is what is in the the storage for the row processing. Okay. So you do the subtraction, uh, and then you do some row alignment. And after that, notice here, I do this. Okay. So anytime you do an operation like this, you have to also make sure that you quantize again. Okay, so because this L has going from minus 127 to 127, this is only minus 31 to 31. So this can go above 31. So you quantize again, make sure it's quantized. So this makes sure that your bit width, the number of bits you're allocating for uh, the storage remains 5. Okay, so that's very important, 5 or 6 in this case. Okay, and then you do the min sum operation here. The min sum doesn't require any uh, checks for uh, increase in value because uh, you're not doing any addition, so that's okay. And then you have addition here again. Okay, so notice what happens here. Uh, so once you have the min sum value, you have to add. Okay, so this is the addition part. And when I add, uh, the temp ultimately becomes L. Okay, so I have to quantize again, but the quantization is to max QL now. Okay, so I'm going from minus 128 to plus 127. Okay, so I, I do that here to make sure I don't uh, overflow here, and that's fine. Okay, so these are the only changes. Other than that, there's nothing else to change everything else works as such okay so converting your code to fixed point is not is a little bit easy to start with but when you look at the operations inside making sure that the bit widths are uh, valid for the different types of numbers you have inside your decoder can be a little troubling in the polar code it's uh, very easy and simple you only have to saturate the g operation in the ldpc code you have two different values one is this r storage that you use for uh, the row processing the other is the l value which is the total llr total belief and as you keep processing the L value is has a larger quantization than the R value. So you have to take care of that and, and uh, keep saturating. Whenever you do addition or subtraction, you have to keep saturating and uh, in a different way. Okay, so that's, uh, that's something important. Once you do that, uh, both of these will work. If you want, I can run these for you. Okay, so let me show you how this uh, decoder runs. I've set it up so that EBO, ABN, EB over N0 is 1.5 dB, maximum iterations is 10. Okay, and then I'm running it for 100 blocks. Uh, let's run this okay so it's finished running it gave you some answers uh, maybe you can't see that very clearly so maybe I should run it once again I'll run it once again just to show you uh, how that uh, how these numbers look it's not too bad we got five errors out of uh, 100 okay so it shows 55 errors out of 100 so it shows that it uh, works it gave you some uh, decoding, so if you want, you can go to 2 dB. If you increase that, you will get to 0, hopefully. Yeah, so you had only 7 out of 100 uh, in error when you went to 2 dB. Okay, so that's the that's the that's the decoder. It works. Uh, in a in a simple way okay so hopefully the fixed point uh, part of it is clear you can also run the run the polar decoder uh, this is uh, let's also run it at 1.5 uh, don't think again 100 blocks okay so let's run this once again to be sure that we get something reasonable okay it worked quite reasonably you got 37 out of 100 and if you go to 2 you will get you get some performance 12 out of 100 was an error so so this is uh, how the uh, fixed point is done okay